Hey, welcome to the Dr. G Live show. I'm pretty sure we're on. I had some uh, kind of hiccups here because my iPhone didn't show the live feature for that. Uh, so I had to go get the laptop and it wasn't charged. And then you couldn't had to boot everything up. And of course, then it's just a whole mess. So, um, hmm. So we're trying, it looks like the, is the video uh, lagging for you guys? Sorry for a little technical difficulty here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so last time we were talking about genetics and what we wanna talk about today um, is a little bit about what things cause genetic mutations. So um, if you guys have questions, um, it looks like on the laptop, I can kind of follow through with you guys. And so I'll try to answer those. And hi, Gina, how you doing? Make sure that you guys post. I'm gonna post some pictures for you guys. Hey, that's actually the right way. Okay. Um, so that way we can look at these charts too and you guys can see them after we get done. And then of course, any questions or comments that you guys have throughout this, please let me know, okay? So it's a little bit of a kind of complex topic, but as you guys know, I had my, um, my genetics tested uh, by 23andMe uh, on the last show. So last week we didn't have one, but the week one before we did. And between then, I actually went over some genetics, uh, genetic report from another patient um, that did the 23andMe. And it was pretty interesting because I, I don't really pay much attention to the beginning one. Uh, I always pay attention to the one that's at the end. Uh, so the back end report. So on the back end, we look at about 20,000 plus genes. There's about 20 to uh, about 20,000 to 25,000 genes uh, in your DNA. And so they all code for all kinds of things and a lot of things code for nothing. But um, on the front of the, the 23andMe report, or well, the one that the patient actually, get, or the, the, the public gets to see, it actually says, uh, you know, are you likely to have a cleft chin, dimples? Uh, but one that was interesting was photogenic sneeze. And so not like, ah, oh, picture perfect, ah, oh, shoot, like that. But when I look at the sun, and I remember in grad school, I, I, I asked my uh, clinician this, but when I look at the sun, I can make myself sneeze. And so I've always done that, and I like it. Um, it releases, I think, oxytocin when you, when you sneeze. So uh, it's kind of a satisfying uh, process. But um, I asked my clinician about that, and he said he had no earthly idea. He's never heard of such a thing. But genetically, I guess there's a gene that makes you more susceptible to that. So that was kind of interesting to see. Uh, there was actually some on apathy. Uh, you know, you're more likely to be kind of apathetic to things, or you're more likely to, or is empathy. If you're more likely to empathize or not empathize, um, I'm sure there's a gene in there for the introvert, extrovert. Hmm. And I guess I'd probably be more introvert. So when we get that gene, genetic report back, and you guys are supposed to guess what you think my heritage is besides uh, white and cracker, um, I think I was told, because uh, my grandma was adopted, that I am. Uh, Swedish, German, uh, Native American, oh, what else, and, and probably English, and, and of course Irish, Patrick Garrett, right, that's all Irish. So it'll be interesting to see what it really comes back with. Um, and of course we talked last time about most uh, white people are Neanderthals, so that's something we'll have to deal with too, because I'm pretty sure I'm Neanderthal. Look at that forehead. That, that is Neanderthal right there. All right, so today what we want to talk about is what actually causes genetic mutations. So you might have remembered that I said that, um, well, I don't have my, that report here, so I'm going to go by memory here, um, that basically each cell repairs about 100,000 DNA mutations a day. So you have 50 to 100 trillion cells. And that's about uh, 10,000 per cell. So that's pretty freaking amazing. Um, our body is really designed very well. We have a great process by which we uh, look, find DNA mutations, uh, chop those out, replace them with new DNA uh, segments that are perfect, right? And so that way everything works. So the vast majority of, of us around the world 
should just not have cancer, right? Uh, we shouldn't have chronic mutations. It's only when you have this amount of mutation happening and this amount of ability to reverse that mutation before you end up maintaining that mutation. And when you maintain it, that's when you get into some serious trouble. So that's when you have chronic genetic problems or you have chronic uh, uh, diseases like cancer with oncogenes being turned on, turned on instead of turned off, or trisomy 21s or those kind of things. So those DNA mutations can wreak havoc on a, a person if they're not constantly repaired on a daily basis. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, Gina. Um, hey, Tricia. So what we want to talk about is then are we being exposed to those and where do we find them in the home or find, our, find them in their environment? And unfortunately, the things that are most likely to mutate your DNA is in all the things that you mess with. So uh, here's a short list, okay? These are just general areas. Uh, so the most uh, DNA mutating chemicals are in food, cosmetics, paint, varnish, polyurethane, gasoline, glues, detergents, paint thinners, uh, furniture wax, inks, coatings, like those uh, plastic coatings and cups and stuff like that, uh, especially receipts, that's bisphenol A. Uh, rubber, uh, not condoms, but well, condoms too, but rubber, like rubber seals, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Individual clean, or industrial cleaners, solvents, nylon, uh, uh, even polyester, pesticides, med medications, isn't that awesome? Uh, so the medications have chemicals that are known to cause cancer. And then dyes, which is really the, the start of all this, um, back when uh, we took permanent dyes, and made, uh, made those out of coal tar, and then those became the next uh, pharmaceutical industries. And then dry cleaning, horribly, horribly toxic. There's a big cleanup in Kansas with that too because they just store the crap underground and then eventually it leaks into the water system and it gets bad enough and we're underfunded so we can't clean it up, so uh, they just put out warnings and people are screwed. Now people in uh, Houston municipal area, holy crap, they have tons and tons and tons of cancer-causing chemicals that are found in the water but they don't have enough money to clean it up. The companies won't clean it up. The government won't make the companies clean it up. So they just close it up, move on, and it's all fine. Then everybody gets these big cancer clusters there too. Paint, uh, burning coal, like the 1800s, but we still do that. Soda, there was actually a, uh, I think it was NBC had a, a story back in 2006, so uh, about 12 years ago that there was, I think it was eight times the amount of benzene or cancer-causing uh, derivatives in uh, soda uh, than they allow. They allow it. This is too much. That's nice. Juice, big time. Supplements, uh, we said polyester, so like clothing, kind of the, hey, my pants won't wrinkle now, but every time I wear them, it's leaching into my skin, these chemicals that cause cancer, and my body has to figure out how to get rid of that. Um, what about right here? Fake, fork, boat. Oh, fake smells. Okay, it was fake. Uh, fake smells. So like air fresheners, uh, all those kind of perfumes and, and fragrances from like Liz Claiborne to uh, Mademoiselle to um, those scentsy candles and Glade air fresheners and Owls, all horribly um, cancer causing. But what's worse is they're actually aromatic, which means they're floating around, uh, and then you breathe them in, and then they're inside your body. Of course, candles that are artificial, um, uh, let's see, BPA, plastics, those kind of things. So that was quite a few, quite a few things. And, and you know, when you look at, like, safety regulations, they'll say, well, you know, it's safe to have, say, toluene, which is paint thinner and gum because it's just a tiny little amount. So it's enough that your body can overcome it, right? Kind of like how you're supposed to take Tylenol, say, every six hours. And the reason they put those kind of limitations on certain medications is because if you took more, your body cannot detoxify it fast enough, and then you end up killing the liver. So same with Tylenol, or sorry, uh, ibuprofen, aspirin. You have to let the kidneys heal back up before you have the next dose. So that's where, you know, 
Um, Tylenol is the leading cause of liver failure, something like 52% of all failures that just do that one drug. And then you have uh, ibuprofen, aspirin are the leading cause of kidney failure. That means that we take things that are so damaging to the human tissue that it takes six hours before you can do it again, right? It's kind of getting beat up and then be like, okay, I need a timeout, 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 like when you're a kid, right? Timeout, timeout, let me catch my breath. Let me catch my breath, kind of work out everything. Okay, let's, let's get back to it, right? So that's what your body does. It's crazy. Um, I mean, that's pretty harmful stuff. And so when you look at the chemicals and you look at like the news articles that come out where they say children that consume, what is it, 12 servings of processed meats uh, in a month, so that's 30 days. So every other day they have a hot dog or every other day they have lunch meat or every other day they have some chicken nuggets. That's not even every day, but it puts them at astronomical risk for things like leukemia, lymphoma, those blood uh, uh, and, and uh, lymph tissue cancers. So we don't change that. We just warn people about that. Hey, the stuff uh, we're allowing you to eat and drink yeah, yeah, it's going to cause cancer, but that's fine. If you lose your house, it's okay. You can live it under the bridge, get a nice box, maybe a refrigerator box with a little vacation washer box, you know, under another bridge or something like that down the road. America, right? So we poison people, we mess up the DNA, we keep messing it up until we get persistent mutations, and then we act like it's a surprise or have no idea why all these people suddenly are having all this uh, cancer. So on these feeds, it doesn't look like uh, they're going through. And it might, I don't know. Uh, so if you guys are posting stuff, that's fine. I, I haven't seen anything come through except for a genus. Uh, so p please feel, uh, sorry, feel free to post, of course, uh, now. And then also, if you guys watch this offline, uh, please post things if you have questions. And I'll try to answer all those things. And uh, sometimes we get uh, yeah, like 500 to 1,000, 1,200, something like that uh, views. And so sometimes there's a lot of questions and it gets a little bit overwhelming, but I'll get through them. So when we look at gen genetic mutations, it's persistent uh, insult or persistent damage to that DNA to a point where the body doesn't have the resources to edit that out. So if you look at something as simple as like the number one cancer uh, for men and women, which is um, uh, colon cancer, the next, next one's estrogenic cancers. Um, if you look at that, you know, what's the thing that prevents that cancer, right? It, it's, it's fiber, they, they've said that forever. If you get enough fiber, you won't get colon cancer. And the reason for that is, if you eat fruits and vegetables, so like back in, I think it was 1980 or something like that, they said five servings of fruits and vegetables or five handfuls is enough to prevent something like 85% of all cancers, even 75% in smokers, which is pretty amazing, right? So when you look at that, um, the, uh, the, the fruit sugar in there, uh, is going to bind to the fiber in there that you don't digest. So there's these undigestible fibers. And you're like, well, why the hell do we have those, right? So they bind 80% of the sugars in that fruit or that berry to that fiber, and that creates something called fructooligosaccharides, or FOS. Or if you go to the health food store, uh, you can buy it as prebiotics. So you drink a bunch of juice, go to the store and buy the fiber that they took out of the juice, um, so that you don't get cancer. And then uh, you just buy back the stuff you took out in the first place. That's why juice is not uh, healthy. Ju juice and smoothies are, because you want the fiber. So then that fruto oligosaccharide feeds your gut bacteria. So you have to have a really good sense of gut bacteria in your gut. Something like uh, one, you have one human cell for every 10 bacterial cells according to Harvard. Should be about three pounds of your body weight inside and out. And then those are what digest that fructooligosaccharides. And with that, you end up getting um, something called butyrate. And butyrate is what uh, feeds DNA polymerase. And DNA polymerase is what edits out mutations in your DNA. And it looks, oh, looks like we have a visitor. Oh, 
Here. She's not supposed to get on the table, but this is Kiki. She also um, works as a shotgun. Like that. So, um, with that fructo oligosaccharide, that, um, oh, sorry. So, with that butyrate, that feeds that DNA polymerase. So, DNA polymerase is this beautiful thing that goes up through your DNA. And it looks at uh, what are called histones. And then histones tell the DNA polymerase what the next set of uh, codes should look like, the T to A and the C to G. And it marries those up perfectly so you can always have normal DNA. So if, if DNA polymerase goes through there and it's eating its butyrate, like it has enough energy, and if it gets enough, it will then uh, correctly edit out mutations. So when you get exposed to chemicals like glues or colognes or perfumes on a regular basis, if you have enough of that fruit fiber, then it'll actually edit out that mutation. And so most of us really, if we have low exposure, we should have low risk of cancer. So that's what we see back in the old days, and that's what we see in other countries. Something like, what, breast cancer? Is that right? You have eight breasts. You should listen to this. So... Six breasts, eight breasts. I'm not sure. Um, so, if you flew to say another country, something like I think the I think it's the Middle East, they have a ninety percent reduction of breast cancer. But now in America, uh, one out of every thousand breast cancers are guys. So now Harvard says that men need to get mammograms. Men, can you believe that? The cat and me have blue eyes. We're like Daniel, like Daniel Craig one and two, except she's a girl. She's like a Miss Daniel Crane. So that's that simplicity of saying, well, why, why do we all have cancer? What can we do to get rid of cancer? Why is everybody plagued with cancer? And it really is just a, a matter of what are we doing to, to cause chronic exposure? And then what are we doing to cause chronic repair so we can overcome this mutation? And this is where like with patients, step two of our protocol that we go through is we really go through and eliminate and identify and eliminate all these chemicals, and I know it's so overwhelming for patients, but they have to do this because most of these are endocrine disruptors. And then, of course, they're cancer-causing. They disrupt the immune system. They're allergenic, all kinds of horrible problems. So um, when you look at just one chemical, uh, we'll say look at benzene. And, I, you know, for those of you guys who haven't heard this from me before, think about gum. If you go buy any gum at the store, not at the health food store, regular store. You buy your gum. The colors in there are derived from coal tar, which is petroleum waste product, and it is uh, neurotoxic and cancer causing, right? Coal tar is what we used to cause cancer back in 1972 in labs so we could study how to cure cancer. Uh, America said, hey, let's put just coal tar that causes cancer and everything, and then we could study more cancer in living people. So, the colors are from petroleum. The flavors are from petroleum, like vanillin, right? Somebody posted on my, they made a mistake and they didn't like it, but they posted their ID nutrition thing on my, my feed. Well, I always look up and see if the, the stuff that people post is good or it's bad. Um, and it had vanillin in there and that is petroleum based. That'll decrease brain growth and cause cancer. They ain't posting that stuff on my side. So, um, so I, I, yeah, never mind. So it was pretty funny, but uh, I did get called an asshole, but I was like, well, these are cheap and synthetic and don't post these on my site then, you know? So, um, so then you look at uh, the, the preservative in, in gum, which is toluene, right? If you go to the hardware store, you buy toluene as paint thinner. But if you go to the grocery store, you buy toluene as butyl hydrotoluene which is a preservative because of course if we use paint thinner as a preservative then we don't use, have to use malic acid and ascorbic acid and rosemary and it's, it's far you know cheaper and you can make, I think it's like 1200% more profit if you use synthetics. And then the three sugars in there, neotame, aspartame, acetyltame, those all convert back to formaldehyde at 87 degrees. So almost every single ingredient in that list in gum now is petroleum. And it's all derived from this chemical here, which is benzene. If you've been to Europe, 
you'll notice that a lot of places that they're not called gas stations, they're called benzene stations. Because benzene is that flammable part of gasoline that you smell when you're pumping gas. And somebody, probably American, uh, thought, you know what, that flammable part, what if I could put that in food? Hmm, I could use that and I could make all kinds of food and drinks and clothes out of that thing. That seems like a really good idea, of course, right? Well, uh, let's see. It seems like a very profitable thing. But we'll go through this chart. So things that are derived from benzene um, that you probably have heard of. So there's, <coughs> sorry. The first ones are really bad because these actually mess with your thyroid. Fluorobenzene, chlorobenzene, bromobenzene, um, and then idobenzene. Those are all halides. Uh, those halogens actually compete for, compete for the iodine receptors on thyroid, on tyrosine, and they will mess up you, but your labs will look great. So that's awesome. You get your labs back. You're obviously hypothyroid. Uh, and then your doctor says, ah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. It's all in your head. Then we come to toluene. Toluene's paint thinner. Cumene, I believe, makes um, bisphenol A. So cumene, not cumin, or curcumin, but cumin. See, C-U-M-E-N-E. That's the one. And the last one on that row is styrene. Styrene from benzene makes styrofoam, which is really, really one of the most potent estrogens that you can get. And what's really bad about that one is if you want estrogens to release and cancer-causing chemicals to release that'll mess up your DNA, heat that plastic up. So, of course, what do we do? We take styrenes and we put hot stuff in there. And then we have orthoxylene. Um, and I have that, uh, yep. That makes polyester. So any of those synthetic, uh, I mean, I had to switch on my pants to the, to the ones that wrinkle. And so I was all happy because I got all these round tree in Yorks and they don't have to, be ironed. I have four kids, and so, so I was like, I don't want to iron anything. And so I get the ones that don't iron, and then I'm sitting there treating people with cancer, and I'm telling them to stay away from these, and then I'm like, okay, well, I got to stop doing this. So I had to stop wearing those. So xylene's pretty messed up. Uh, phenols, those are pretty bad. Phenols end up making, let's see here. Oh, uh, bisphenol A, right? Uh, BPA. Which then makes epoxy, epoxics and I don't say epoxies, which are glues, and then also uh, plastics for like plastic number seven, um, PVC, uh, polyvinyl, uh, polycarbonate. That's in there too. Methyl benzate, well, at least it has a methyl group, right? Now, this next one in the very center is called benzoic acid. Now, that's one, and you should see, is there benzoate on there? I think it's, it's down the line there. But benzoic acid and sodium benzoate are one of the two most common ones we see in things like food and juices, um, kids' products, sodas, that kind of thing. I had a patient once that uh, brought in her supplements, and uh, it had benzene in there, benzoic acid. And anything with a benz, think benzene, think gasoline, flammable part of gasoline. So the only good benz is a Mercedes benz, otherwise it's petroleum. So she said, well, um, these are the best products in the world. Uh, they wouldn't do anything harmful to them. So I explained it to her. I showed her the physiology. I drew out the organic chemistry of it. And then she sent that into the science director of the company. And then the science director came back and said, well, benzoic acid is a naturally occurring uh, substance in decaying fruit. Well, it's also a naturally occurring substance in human uh, physiology, too. But what they're using is not decayed fruit. They're using petroleum waste products, which are cancer-causing neurotoxic. So when you look at like the World Health Organization where they said um, American processed meat is more likely to cause cancer than smoking cigarettes, that's a pretty big deal. But we put cancer-causing chemicals in there and then eat it all the time. Uh, in 2006, the American diet became the leading cause of preventable death over smoking so it's better to tell your children to smoke than eat like an American. So it's pretty messed up because, again, the chemicals we use are, are worse than smoking now, which is atrocious. Now, there's naphthalene. Naphthalene, you guys probably know. And sometimes you'll see a natural laundry detergent, and it'll have naphthalene in there. Horribly toxic. Uh, naphthalene is mothballs. 
And then there's benzonitro, which is nitro gloves. So that becomes a big problem for some people, but you know, if you have that constant exposure, then you want to um, ditch it or try to minimize it. Or, okay, there's some things you can't, right? If you're, if you're a doctor, a nurse, you know, a CNA, and you're wearing those gloves all the time, you might switch to a nitro, which is a little bit maybe less allergenic uh, than the latex gloves, but you're still constantly exposing yourself. You're sweating in there, absorbing into your bloodstream. So studies show that people like with bisphenol A, which is horribly estrogenic, horribly uh, toxic to DNA, it actually um, is decreased by 90% for people that eat a regular diet of fruits and vegetables. And it doesn't take a whole lot. It really doesn't. Uh, now the, I think the recommendations are 13 fruits and vegetables a day. And so that's uh, two handful or uh, each serving is a handful. So 13. So Basically, four sides for three meals, you get 12. So an extra little snack, and you're good. Now, on this chart here, which I'll post, this one is another one that, that shows these same things, but in a little different structure. Now, on here, we have uh, acetone. And, of course, acetone is the same chemical that's created from cumin, which is created from benzene, which is DNA mutating. But that's what they create uh, decaf coffee with. So for those people that like decaffeinated coffee, they use acetones to chemically break that caffeine molecule off so they can sell it to Red Bull or you know Coca-Cola or someone else. But it's toxic at that point. I actually had a patient that uh, he said, yeah, that's what my company does. And uh, no, it's crazy toxic. And then on the other side of cumin, you make phenol, and phenol makes bisphenol A. And BPA plastic is what... Um, we think more like hard plastic drinking water bottles like Nalgene and Camelback, and uh, that sucks. It really sucks because it's nice because they don't break, but it's at a sacrifice. So you're better off getting a glass jar with rubber on the outside, like a little cool pattern they have at the health food stores, which is probably the most expensive place to get it. But, you know, Target, Walmart, online, you know, Amazon, they'll have plenty. The best is going to be a, a silicone seal inside the plastic lid. So the least possible amount of plastic exposure possible. So bisphenol A, BPA, or plastic number seven, uh, is one of those that's uh, one, two, three away from benzene. And then benzene, or sorry, bisphenol A is made uh, into epoxy resins. And so that's back to your like lacquers and, and your um, polyurethanes, that kind of stuff. The cyclohexane or hexane that's made from benzene, it makes nylon. And so with the nylon, that ends up being some of the clothes and fabrics that are synthetics. Uh, otherwise, hopefully wouldn't have a lot of exposure to that. Now there's another list here that's a little bit similar to that, but it had a couple extra things at the bottom, which I thought was pretty nice. <clears throat> so this one shows where toluene and benzene come in. And toluene makes polyurethane. I don't think there's anything new on here that we haven't covered. And then we have xylene. And xylene becomes polyester, polyester fibers and resins also. And then xylene also makes phthalates, or a phthalic uh, anhydride, which makes phthalic acids. And phthalates are plastic number three, uh, which are the ones that are in perfumes. Um, so what is that? That's... One, two, three, three away from uh, benzene. So that is all the artificial clones, all the artificial perfumes, all the artificial candles, all the artificial um, flavor or say, uh, scent enhancers and shampoos and lotions. Now, very quickly, you should be able to see, like, I mean, we're getting exposed to these things all the time. I mean, most people wearing clothes the whole day that are causing them to cause DNA mutation. If they drink sodas with benzene, right? Like so Dr. Pepper, you'll see sodium benzoate in there or benzoic acid, one of those. Then you're drinking cancer and DNA mutation. And then you're chewing DNA mutation with the gum. And then if you're using detergents, the chemicals that are still in there, the flame retardants that are in your clothes, those are DNA mutating things too. So when they say that it's safe uh, for exposure, 
they forget the fact that we're getting just inundated with all of these through things we eat, drink, breathe, rub on our skin, and uh, wear on our, our uh, skin. And eventually, that toxicity surpasses our ability to detox. And with that difference, we end up main, maintaining that mutation. Now, the beautiful part about this that we talked about last time uh, was that we typically don't see those mutations. Or sorry, um, ah, I can see the I can see the comments now. Okay, I figured it out. Let's get a little sidetracked there. Okay, so let me let me go through some of these too. Um, so post some questions, um, and then and then I'm gonna answer these real quick. Um, now I lost my track. All right, let's let's go through these real quick. Okay, so hey Melinda, Jan. Um, Good to see you guys. Sarah, would you please uh, post a pic of the list that we could share? Absolutely, uh, Sarah, I'll get that on here. Uh, I see Lindy join, that's awesome. And be on it, where's my, hmm, I need to move this. Okay, I, I figured it out. A new laptop, I haven't used this before. Danielle says hi. Um, Okay, so let's see. Diana said thank you. Uh, Divana? That's a good name. She said gorgeous cat. Are you talking about me? Or the, oh, probably Kiki. Bye, Kiki. Uh, Suzanne, hey, how's it going? Um, we got lots of people joining. That's awesome. Okay, there is a gene about cilantro if it tastes like soap. Well, that's so okay. So Brianna said that, right? Um, and that's really interesting on on the DNA report. Like it even talks about the twenty three me one will have you know does your urine smell like uh, I think smell with asparagus or something like that. It, it'll be interesting. It, it'll be interesting when it comes back. Uh, and just so you guys know, I think it takes five weeks to get back. Um, that's how long the last patient was. We go over those at the office. So if, if you ever have a 23 and me and you want to actually look at the 20,000 genes on the back end, there's usually like two to 400 mutations that we go over, or at least mostly talk about because just because you have a mutation doesn't mean you'll have a, main, a, a condition or disease or anything like that. So uh, we talk a lot about DNA is not your destiny, but here's things we'd really want to change. But if you have some kind of, genetic mutation, then we want to say, okay, well, epigenetically, how do we allow the body to help uh, reverse that, kind of make it uh, decrease the toxicity, increase the nutrition, uh, that's epigenetic. And next week, we'll talk about that. But when I get my DNA report in, I'll, I'll show you guys. So we'll go through it. You guys, you guys will know more about me than you ever wanted to know. So the gene for cilantro, that's pretty interesting. So the question then, Brianna, was, uh, did you have a mutation in that gene? Or for you, does uh, uh, cilantro taste like soap? So I didn't think about that, because you know, you see a lot of people on Facebook that are uh, hating on cilantro, and I don't get it, because cilantro tastes amazing to me, but that's right. So one, one interesting thing I, I learned when I was doing my psych rounds years ago was uh, perception is really unique. So what we think we smell, may be completely different from what someone else smells. And so just because we experience them doesn't mean other people experience the same way. So for years, I thought uh, skunk smelled like lemon. So whatever DNA gene you, you know, is, is, is the one for skunk smell, uh, I think mine's a little whack. So when I smell skunks when I'm driving, I love it. I'm just like, oh, I can't, I can't get enough. It smells like lemon. It smells like pledge. Growing up, it smells like pledge. Now, maybe, maybe my mom used skunk spray as pledge. Or there's something genetically wrong with my uh, nose uh, where the smell for skunk says, oh, that smells like uh, lemon pledge. So do any of you guys have that or have any kind of weird things like that where uh, I know genetically like some people can see different, slightly different colors. That's, that's the other thing too, where you'll have someone that argues and uh, I, I, I probably have that because I've argued with people that I'm like, that's green. And they're like, no, it's blue. It's green. No, it's blue. And I'm just like looking at it like, no, no. But, you know, the, our truth is our truth. It's our perception. So, you know, that's that's kind of crazy. Um, that'll, that'll be interesting genetically to see. 
All right, so I thought I, well, I guess I did have it there. Hmm. Okay. No, maybe it goes down. I don't know. Someone post something, post, post a comment so I can see, is this going down or up? I can't figure it out. I think Melinda just joined. Um, that's the last thing that makes sense. So, yeah. So our main thing then, as, as we go through this today, uh, if you guys have questions, let me know. But, you know, there's a great website called environmentalworkinggroup.org. There's an app uh, for your phone called Healthy Living. And I believe someone else posted, and he's supposed to be on tonight. Um, dang it. Um, he, there was a new app. I think it was like Dirty Living or something like that. But it's an app for the phone. And you could just be, kind of look over the barcode like uh, you do with Healthy Living, and it'll pop up how toxic it is. Now, there's still some caveats to that. I mean, when we go through those with patients, you know, it might be like, well, it's a three or two, so it's not so bad. But then that the one thing in there is like a nine, but it has all these other ones and zeros, so you still shouldn't do it, you know? But what's, when you look at that, it's pretty interesting because if you put in like, I give the example all the time, like herbal essence shampoo which is one of the top 10 cancer-causing chemicals in your home, if I remember right. Um, it, it'll have every, every ingredient listed on there, it'll have how toxic it is, uh, and then it'll have uh, uh, research-wise what it does to your body. So then, if you look at that, um, you can say, okay, well, uh, this is probably more risk than benefit here, right? I don't want to have to undo all that damage. But if you put in like, um, was it Jessica Alba's honest line of shampoo? There's no toxic stuff in there. So we can get the same cleansing without the toxicity. And that's the crazy part, uh, is that you can actually get the same you know, shampoo, same soap, same everything, and you can either kill yourself in the process or heal yourself in the process. That's the crazy part about it. For Americans, we have to sit there and fight through this stuff. We do. Because... Other countries, you know, they did a lot of them, they just ban these chemicals because they don't want to make sick people. It's a lot cheaper not making sick people. So let's see, FDA. Do, 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 do. Oh, plastic number six is um, plastic number six is styrene, which makes styrofoam. So usually you think of styrofoam as the foamy, crunchy stuff, right? But actually, some of the hard plastics are styrofoam. What other chemicals, you guys? Uh, melamine's one. Melamine, I think, was made by Tupperware, if I remember right. But melamine is horribly estrogenic. It's bisphenol A. So, again, it won't have the plastic 7 on there. It won't say bisphenol A on there. But melamine's horribly toxic. That's the stuff you use for kids, which is even worse. And I think uh, when I was lecturing maybe up in Chicago, um, the Canada just banned, FD, uh, banned bisphenol A products in uh, baby products. Uh, so, of course, the pacifiers, the nipples, the bottles, like the formula, everything has bisphenol A in there. Horribly estrogenic, cancer-causing stuff. So they banned it. Our FDA took a vote on it, and we decided, ah, it's fine, don't worry about it. So we're okay with it. So then what was amazing and what made the paper was that Walmart banned it for baby products. So that's the craziest thing in the, in the world is when Walmart is actually protecting American kids more than the FDA. So kind of messed up. Um, any other chemicals or questions that you guys have? I mean, feel free to post, uh, keep posting on this. Um, I, um, there's a whole list. I'll, I'll try to provide that whole list if I can uh, that I usually give for patients. It, it's, it's not an exhaustive list, but it kind of gives you the idea that you really have to start to look at what you're uh, drinking, eating, breathing, rubbing on your skin. If some of you guys would also post things that you change to. So, you know, the talk that we have sometimes with patients is kind of depressing because it's like, oh, my God, all this stuff. I've been poisoning everybody and myself. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, there's lots of great options. So most soaps are horribly toxic. And I think I posted this uh, on Facebook the other day. Uh, I was just at Natural Grocers. I finally made it there. Uh, I've been desperately needing things. And so I uh, 
got some stuff. And I always try to take a picture just to, again, just to post, hey, this is the stuff that I buy. So in case you guys have uh, questions or need more ideas, I love when other people post their things, right? So bar soap, um, I think Zoom is good. Um, I, I love the sea salt one. And Amy um, Simpson's one that told me about that. It's a big bar. It's, it's probably the biggest chunk of soap. And it's like, I think four bucks, but it, I think it's, it lasts, I think it lasts four bucks worth. And then like, so with Jason products, some Jason products are toxic, some are not. The xylitol um, toothpaste, I'd say toothpaste, it has benzene in there. So you don't want that, but it's at a health food store. But if you get like Tom's, Tom's had the fluoride free, it does not have benzene in there. So that's better. So it's a matter, and gosh, the last time we did that store tour, um, I, man, we spent, I don't know, three hours or something just in the chemical area. It was really bad. So um, we, uh, uh, we were just reading labels like crazy. And the store manager actually came over and was like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, whoa, dude, we're just reading labels, yo. So we almost got in trouble for this, which is messed up. And we, because we also used our app. So I think they thought we were trying to compare prices. That was at Sprouts that we got in trouble. So we did a little store tour, we, which we ought to do again. We should do that again. Um, let me see. Because that was fun, but we need to be a little bit more targeted on our, our uh, store tour because we did not get to the fruits or anything. Uh, shampoos, like um, one of the best ones is uh, a cure because you can buy that at uh, Target. I, you know, it sucks because I keep forgetting to get some. And I, I pretty much just use conditioner. You know, I do the no poo challenge. So if you look at the hair, like I don't wash it, but maybe if I've, I've only washed it like maybe once a month. Uh, for the last six, seven months now. Whoa. June. Holy crap. Like seven months now. I've been doing that no poo challenge, right? So you wash your hair, but just with water. You don't you don't use a bunch of shampoo because uh, you're washing out your natural oils. So then you got to put conditioner in there. It's a whole mess. So um, since I've been doing that, no, no flaking anything. It's been great. So stop washing off the oil. Stop causing the problem. A lot of shampoos, uh, lotions are horribly toxic. So something as simple as um, um, a cure, which again, you can buy on Amazon. But I didn't buy it. Uh, and so then I was like, screw it. So I uh, forgot. And so I went to Walmart and I just, again, I read like every label. It was just like every patient where I'm just like, ah, oh, this is the worst, right? Because I live in Newton. There's nowhere in Newton except for Prairie Harvest, but it was closed. And <laughs> so I was like, why is there like 50,000 products, but I can't find one that doesn't have a bunch of horrible chemicals in there. Um, so I can just clean my dang hair, right? The hell. So that, that's a big difference. Uh, so there's a cure. There's uh, several other ones that we can use and post the ones that you guys like. Let's see what else. Uh, pink nail glove. Industrial cleaners or even like household cleaners, really just one part vinegar, four parts water cleans everything. So then you're dramatically reducing the chemical toxicity. The EPA says that if you spray one ounce of chemical cleaner in your house, within 28 seconds, that's in every organ of your body, including your brain. So for children, it's even more toxic. So um, one part vinegar, four parts water in a spray bottle is non-streaking, cleans everything. If you spray the cat, cat got healthier. If you spray the um, kids, kids got healthier. Let me mess with the cat just a second. There you go. Sorry, I scratched my leg. Uh, dry cleaning, same thing as I stopped doing dry cleaning. I just started trying to iron my clothes. Uh, I stopped burning coal about 300 years ago when we got rid of our coal oven. Uh, so that's pretty good. We had the horse-drawn carriage, and we had, we had to burn a lot of coal. That kept the cabin warm, you know. And, you know, not doing juice is good, but uh, soda-wise, don't do soda. That's easy enough. The, now, the, the smells, the perfumes and colognes, you know, if you're resistant, at least spray stuff and walk away and then wear it. 
But otherwise, there are some really great colognes that you can make with essential oils and perfumes. And in fact, for my birthday, my right tribe friends, thank you very much, uh, got me uh, um, a gift certificate to a place in Wichita and Douglas that actually you can make natural scents from. So uh, it's pretty good. So they customize them for you. And then the air freshener, same thing. Just take some essential oils. So all those synthetic ones, just uh, take some, uh, you know, like felt or take like a little piece of cardboard or something. But um, just put that and clip it onto your uh, air vent and let the, the um, that smell. And someone put patchouli and blood orange. Oh, it's Tiffany in my office on some uh, felt. And, oh, my God, that smelled amazing. It was really good. And of course, switching the glass, never cook uh, in plastic, never store in plastic as much as possible. All those little things really add up. So you're not going to get out of a, a situation where you're just constantly being exposed to these things, but you wanna find systematically how you can reduce your exposure to these things. America's not gonna be perfect with this, it's gonna be tough, but what can I do to eliminate as much as possible so that when I do eat my fruits and vegetables, it doesn't have to, you know, overcome so much, it just has to do that minimal part. So then I don't get cancer and I, I reverse cancer all the time, like uh, the American Cancer Institute said we could. So, all right, chemicals bad. And you know, like I, I remember when I got my iPhone too, uh, they said, well, it, it has bisphenol A, it has this and that. I'm like, well, I better eat more fruit and vegetables because I'm not getting rid of my phone. So that's where you use air tubes for that and then uh, keeping it uh, away from you and having those little protectors, that kind of stuff. So, all right, uh, that's all I have for you guys. Um, now, next time, what we're going to talk about is see, it shows more, more posts, but I'm not seeing them, you guys. I'm so sorry. I'm not seeing them. So, I, I it's showing more and more comments on here, but I'll, I'll have to, I guess, go do them offline. For some reason, it's not showing up in the live feed. I'm sorry we started a little bit late, too. But next week, what we're going to talk about is the empowering part, too. Is okay, first thing we want to do is reduce the toxicity exposure, um, knowing we can't eliminate it. But then we want to do, what can we do to really reverse gene mutation? So things like the SIRT gene, the HAD gene, the H, uh, AC gene, those genes that regulate histones, methylations, all that stuff. Uh, and we'll go through all of that kind of basic biochemistry, not too complicated, not too deep, but enough that it'll make a little bit of sense of like what we're really talking about. But then the simplicity, we'll talk about food. And really a lot of it is just what you'd expect. So it's just stuff we don't do. So I want to talk a lot next time about food. And thank you guys for attending. Uh, post lots of questions. Um, Definitely, you know, and I want you guys to, this is for you guys, of course, every week. And what we want to do is try to help the other people that are going through the same way, same things, find solutions and opportunities too. So if there's uh, products that you've switched to that are non-toxic, they have to be non-toxic, please share those. Like, and, and even your experience too, because um, I hear it every day with patients of all the stuff they have to change, and it's, it's it's rough. It is rough. Yeah, I remember doing it myself. But when you find those handful of things that you can buy, it's so nice. You're not constantly reading, reading labels. You kind of have those things that you can always go to and get. So, all right. Thank you for watching Dr. G Show. This is episode 83, I think. So we're moving right along. And uh, maybe next week we'll have a guest, but I'm not sure. Maybe we'll get the other cat as a guest. That cat was kind of a little shy, right? Disappeared. There's a cat right there. That's the that's the older cat. So that's the one that was laying next to me, and I was snuggling it like this last night. So when they and then when they lay on your back, you're just like, I've been chosen. I can't do anything. So I was I love that. But then I was like, oh, I guess I got to lay here for the rest of the day. All right, you guys. Thank you, guys. And uh, talk to you guys soon. All right? Bye-bye.